Jesus. Good morning. My name is Chris, and I'm so glad to be here with all of you this morning. So um, I look forward to worshiping with you, but I also have a couple special announcements. So the last two days, we had our Christmas market that benefits missions, and um, we have a few of our vendors, our vendors from this church. So they are still set up this morning for after worship in the social hall. And um, many of the proceeds from those things go to missions. In addition to those, I didn't have a booth at the Christmas market, but I have home canned goods for sale that go to benefit, the funds go to benefit Coffee Oasis and, um, what's my second one? And another homeless organization that provides housing of homes of compassion. Thank you, God, for giving me the name back. And we have our Twice Love Boutique. It has many nice items. We're not just giving them away for free, but we have marked the prices down 50% just for you guys. So, and there's a bake sale that benefits the clothing bank. It's all in the social hall and the great hall, and the seating for um, coffee hour will be partly in the, in the social hall and partly in the great hall. So thanks for, for supporting missions through your purchases and donations. And on to Pastor Dave to give us our welcome for the day. Well, good morning to you again, and welcome to you. As we begin, we're thinking about coming into God's house, and the reasons that we have for being here, and the gift of being in the presence of God's people and, and of hearing his word. You know, some of us stand outside and greet at the doors, and I always thought that because I was assigned to this side that people parked over there because we were there. Uh, and <laughs> just a little ego disorder. And then, then I looked out the other door where, where Don and James are, and there's two or three times as many cars over there. <laughs> well, whatever door you came in here today, we are delighted that you're here. We're here, as Psalm 25 says, that God will show us his ways. He will teach us the right path for walking. He will guide us in his truth and he will teach us because he is our God and he is our Savior and our hope is set in our God all day long. And that's why we're here, because our hope is set in our God. As we worship, we're going to be led by longtime friend Joe Jurgensen from Faith Fellowship and uh, he... he <laughs> We have good memories here back years ago when we had combined community services. We had services right here, and Joe was part of it, and I was part of it, and many other pastors did. And so it's a little bit of homecoming for Joe and for me. And I know that if you haven't met Joe, you'll love his music as he leads us in worship. Will you stand? Lord God, bless us today. Fill us with your word, with your wisdom. We have so many reasons to come and to worship and to praise you. Now, Fill us with your spirit, with your word, and remind us that our salvation is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I remember way back when Wally Snook was here. That, and actually way back when Dave Snapper was a good person. <laughs> No, just good to be in this place with you and to worship, and it's always good to be in God's house. And funny that Dave mentioned the Psalms because I have been reading through the Psalms just voraciously. I just finished my second time through the whole book of Psalms in a month. 
I've done it twice now, and it's just been enriching me. And here's a, uh, a psalm that I want to do share with you before we begin. It says this, I will extol the Lord at all times. So that's one of these times right now. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Now, David was very afflicted. I mean, he had a father-in-law that was trying to kill him. He had a wife that despised him. He had his best friend, Jonathan, who was trying to navigate between his father and himself. The Psalms are full of David saying, my enemies are encroaching upon me on, on every side in every direction. And then he says this, let us exalt the Lord together. I just want you to know this morning that whatever the affliction may be that you have, whether it's something in your heart, whether it's something in your circumstances, whether it's something in your health, whether it's something in your finances, I want to say to you from the Lord's heart today, let the afflicted hear. Let them hear and rejoice. And so I'm going to ask you to join with me as we worship today. Lend your voice unto the presence of God so that he can bring comfort for our affliction and for our needs this morning. We're going to bless his name. Can you tell somebody next to you we're going to bless his name today? I'll tell him that this morning. Amen.
something this morning. Just thank him for his presence. Thank him for his goodness. Thank you for his worthiness to be praised. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy We live for you. Jesus, the name above all names. Amen. Jesus, the name above every other name. 
worship you, Jesus, today because we know, God, that in you, that in you, we have complete victory. We will not be shaken because you. Just with your hands with me, would you do this? Just our voices. God, you're so good. Lift it up. God, you're so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to One more time with your hand on your heart. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Lift it up. He's so good to Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon our hearts this morning. We thank you, God, that there's no affliction, no difficulty, no place we can go from your presence. The psalmist said that too, Lord. Where can I go from your presence, Lord? From the highest and to the lowest, to every place we may walk or be, Lord, you are already there. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. Lord, you're gonna, we're going to boast in who you are, for you are good. And always, Lord, your hand is on us. That's why we're putting our hand on our hearts, because your hand is upon us. May the hand of the Lord be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If I have the text right today, it will be Acts chapter 2. Is that right? Thank you. First thing that God did when he poured out his spirit on Pentecost Day is he built a church, built a family, drew people together, and they loved each other and cared for each other. And as Joe sang, and I remembered our friendship over the years, I remember how pastors got together over the course of the years, and they met and they prayed and there was a family of churches in central Kitsap and all across the county and it was an amazing moment in history because they were knit, knitted together and one Sunday 30 some churches maybe 39 churches across the county closed up their morning worship and if, if, if preachers give up the morning offering this is a big deal and we met together in the pavilion and filled the pavilion till there were no more seats left. It was the biggest uh, single event the pavilion ever had because the church is a family and it's a body and it's a people that care for each other and love each other. If you're visiting here today and you're not sure whether you belong to this family, you're wandering around and wandering, wondering where you belong, you belong here. You belong with God's people. You belong as part of this group that with all of its strengths and weaknesses, we love each other, and we love God. And God is our Lord, he's our savior. 
If you're here and you'd like to identify yourself, please fill out a Connect card that's by your knees and the pew in front of you, and on the other side is for prayer. If you'd like to uh, say something to us more personally, drop that in the offering plate or in the little box in back. We will take an offering in a little bit. You're welcome to contribute to that, and, uh, or in the box, or if you're online, there are instructions online as well. We're family, and we've come together to worship God. Will you join me in prayer as I pray for our extended family? Lord God, thank you for worship. Thank you for giving us so many reasons, 10,000 reasons. Thank you for receiving our love, for making us one. Thank you for Jesus who cut across the barriers that separate us from you, the barriers of sin and shame, and you've restored us and forgiven us. And Lord, we are grateful for your spirit who dwells in us, gives us new life and new hope, makes us a new family. I'd like to pray for some of our friends today who are not here, Herb and Rona right now in special need of your healing and your care and your grace, Ed and Carol, who can't be here, for Nick, who's home with an infection, for Dawn and others who are more housebound than not. Lord, we pray that you will bless them. I'd like to pray for Nancy, who's been waiting for months and months and for knee surgery tomorrow. Bless that as uh, we go through that process. We have a women's retreat coming up, and how we long for your spirit to bless the women, to make them stronger and more full and rich and blessed as they meet together and share the love of being friends in Christ. Lord, I'd like to pray for anyone here who's wondering whether they belong and praying that your spirit will touch them and say, this is the church that could be your home. We could share the love of Christ together and you could reach and we could together become more effective and more in love with God and with one another as we worship together. Bless us as we continue in worship today. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll take the morning offering at uh, this time.
That's right. Let's give him praise this morning. Amen. Please stand when able for the reading of his gospel. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Acts chapter Two verses 41 to 47 of the New Living Translation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Well, good morning, everybody, and if you're a, you're a guest with us, my name is John. I'm the senior pastor at SCC, and, and I just want to echo Pastor Dave's sentiments. I just, Pastor Joe, we're just really, really glad and grateful that you're here to help out this morning, and just, uh... <laughs> oh, well, today we're going we're gonna to talk about, we're going to talk about more about the church, and this series is called The Faith. We've been in this series for a little over a year, kind of on and off. And we're going through the, both the Nicene Creed and the, the first half of the Catechism of the Global Methodist Church. And uh, the first half of the Catechism for, for us Methodists is, um, it's nothing too creative. <laughs> it's not us. It's, it's the faith. And we're trying to find the most uh, basic form of that, communicate it faithfully, practice it faithfully, and enjoy getting to come close to God. Today we're asking the question, what is the church? And the church can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. 
it, it's like there was, a, there was once a church that was, um, they, they had a major renovation they needed to do. And they, they were kind of struggling financially. So they went out into the community and they started asking for donations. And they came to a, a, a Jewish businessman and uh, Mr. Bernstein, and they said, Mr. Bernstein, um, you know, you're very well known in the community and you've donated to so many things. Do you think you could see a way to, to help us with the rebuilding project for our church facility? And Mr. Bernstein thought to himself, and he thought, wow, I mean, I, this church has done so much in the community, but, uh, and so on the one hand, I, I really want to plug in with the community, but on the other hand, I'm Jewish, and, and what am I going to tell my friends? And so he thinks for a second, and he says, uh, well, uh, now, if, when you do this project, I mean, you're really going to go in and, and do a number on the building. Is there, is, are you going to have to take down uh, the main building? And they said, yes, it is. Yes, we are going to have to do that. He says, and how much do you think that that, that will cost to do all the demolition the p- phase of the project? And they said, about $25,000. And he says, well, there we go. Uh, here's a check for $25,000. <laughs> See, the church is a lot of things to a lot of different people, and there are people out there who feel drawn and sympathetic, and they feel some kind of a pull and a connection, but the church, it's the body of believers, it is the church of Jesus Christ, and today we're going to ask the question, what is the church? And the first sub-question that I want to put out there for you is, how do you know, how do you know it's a church? Is it is, is churches, is our, is our sole job just to do good things in the community? Just like this, this church that Mr. Bernstein was going to give to, who did so many lovely things to help people out and their needs. Is it just helping, helping people out? Is it just making a positive contribution to your community? You know, we've got a number of community service organizations. I mean, you've got the Lions, you've got Kiwanis, uh, you've got uh, Rotary, um, there are organizations, you have, there are food banks, like the, here in Central Kitsap, we, got, we have the Central Kitsap Food Bank, which actually was started by uh, church ladies here at the Methodist Church many decades ago, and they saw a need, it started out in the, on this campus, and then it outgrew the campus, and they spun it off into a nonprofit, and then those same ladies then started another food bank, <laughs> which is, we still have internally, which is still running today. But there's something about the church. What is it about the church that is more than simply doing good to people in need or, or just making a positive, a positive contr- contribution? All right. So how do, you, how do you nail that one down? Now, sometimes we have a lot of kids in here, and sometimes if we have, uh, if we have any children that would like to come up and help me with something, we're going to demonstrate something for the, for the people. I'm going to take a break here. Oh, there we go. So if there's any kids that would like to come up, uh, I would love the help, uh, but otherwise, I'm going to show, it's just a lot easier. There we go. Brave souls. Come on up. Here we go. Right on. In fact, I'm going to get you a, uh, I'm going to grab you a microphone so that you can give me some good input. This is uh, handheld one. All right, here we go. Yeah, we, we're going we're gonna to sit down here. All right. So when I was a kid... One of the most boring things in the world that people, to- that people suggested to me would have been fun was bird watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, there's just birds, right? And they're... But it's actually, there's some people, they really get it. Have either of you ever done bird watching? You have. What was it like? Um, go, ahead, go, ahead, we got the, go ahead and hold the mic up. There we go. There we go. Uh, it was like super fun because you get to see the birds like fly around in the sky. Were you able to ID, to identify any of the birds? No. Okay. All right. Well, check that out. Check it out. They've got, you know, you know what the Audubon Society is? They're like, they're like, it's like this bird, it's like a giant bird club. Like, I mean, not for birds, but for people that like birds, right? I know. Yeah, yeah. And they have, so they have clubs all over the United States and probably around the world. Anyway, they've got, they have an app and I got this app. All right. So... Is it going to work? Who knows? But anyway, so I guess if, if we were out, like pretend that we were out looking, looking at some birds. Now, we don't have any birds flying around in the sanctuary today, today. And, uh, but they've got this app. And uh, all right, so here we go. 
and you can just take the app, and then let's see, we can search for a guide. We can okay, we're going to try to identify. Oh, so check it out. So, so the tech team has put up um, a video. Go ahead and roll the video. We've got a couple different birds. Okay, you see that bird there up up front, and the other one. All right, how would you describe? What do you notice about these birds? Okay, they're eating. What about their their features? Like, how would you describe them? How do they look? Okay, both, they're both colored. Yeah. All right. What about their heads? Like yeah, like the one up front has got kind of this tuft or crest or whatever, but what about the one in the back? It's flat. It's flat. All right, so they're kind of different. So you can actually take it. Check it out. We actually, that's how they sound. I know. So you, I guess you can take the app and then, oh, boy. Let's see. All right, so it says it's asking us about size. All right, so we're just going to click, okay, so size, we're going to say it's, uh, I'd say these are pretty little. So we'll just say it's a little bird, and then, now what? All right, what color would you say? Let's try to ID the, the little ones there without the, the thing. Okay, they're definitely black. Okay, we're going to say black and white. And, uh, oh, there's that one with the tuft again. All right, we'll try to, we'll try to do the one in the back. All right, and then you go, all right, so then we go, describe the activity, direct flight, soaring, flap, glide, hovering, like a hummingbird would be one that hovers. This is kind of complicated, wow. Okay, I don't know if this, all right, so soaring. They're really zippy, isn't but none of it says zippy. I know. Do either of you know birds? Do you know what kind of birds these are? No. Okay. The one in back is the the one with the black the, the black hood without the little thing on the head. That one is a I think it's a I only learned this because I was preparing for this sermon. It's a dark eyed a dark eyed junk junko. Am I saying that right? Junko? Is that how you say it? All right. There are bird level, lovers that know. All right. Dark eyed junko. And then the other one is a, uh, it's a, it's a tufted, it's, they call it a titmouse, T-I-T-M-O-U-S-E, titmouse. I know, isn't that crazy? I mean, but it's not a mouse, it's a, it's a bird, but you would think they would name a bat, you know, like that, because bats are a lot more like mice, but yeah, anyway, yeah, like, that's the thing. So the, you can actually carry this app around, like, on a tablet or a phone, and you can take it out with you, and you can get really good at identifying, you know if their, their flight is more flappy or if it's more... All right, so the, the idea is this. Like, they, we, they've got all these things that you can use to, like, to be able to do, like, power bird watching, you know, where you're going to find a bird and you're going to figure it out. You're going to know exactly, you know, if this bird is, uh, you know, what type it is and what variety and where it lives. And you can find out all that information all within an app. But how do you know if you're with a group of people, how do you know if it's a church or not, Right? Yeah, so how do you, oh, go ahead and take a whack at it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make you stay up here the whole time, but <laughs> not today. But what do you, what do you think? How do, would you identify a church? If you're with a group of people, you're an organization, you go to, they have a building, they have a meeting, what things would make you think, oh, you know, this is probably a church? What do you think? Um, maybe if they have a cross. A cross? Yeah. All right. Yeah, symbol of Jesus' death and resurrection, right on. Singing group in the front, and they're okay. talking about Jesus. Yeah, churches singing about Jesus. Music is often really, really, really common for churches. Yeah, there's there are things that will kind of let you know because there's lots of organizations that do good things, but church does good things. But the church is a little is is different. It's 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 separate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to drill down. But you guys have been excellent. Thanks for helping me test out this app. I don't know if I'm ready to try this out in the wild yet, but you guys are excellent. Uh, will you please give them a hand for helping me out today? You guys are awesome. How do you identify, how do you give a, get a positive ID on a church? Because there are so many, organi- there's so many organizations and groups that are doing good things, but there's only one there's only one church. All right. If it's the church, if it's the church, 
you see Jesus. If it's the church, you see Jesus. If it's the church, you see Jesus. That's it. I, I want you to I want you to think that, think back. So Ellen just read for us out of Acts chapter two, and this is Pentecost. This is the beginning of the church, and at the end of chapter two, you get what the next few weeks, what the next few months were like as the church started picking up steam. People were getting on board, and you notice that they're just they're spending time together. And they, there are certain things that they are doing with that time that set them apart from any other group. Remember, the church started in, in Judaism. So these are Jews. They're worshiping at the temple, but... They weren't allowed to be at the temple like all the time and things kind of spilled over and you can't just spend 24-7 at the temple unless you just want to go without eating that whole time. So people had to go home, they had to eat and they decided to spend their time doing meals at home and, and that was, they just, they couldn't get enough of what God was doing in their lives, in their hearts and what God was doing when they came together. They just, they, they couldn't, couldn't get enough. And so the things, that, the things that Jesus was doing were the things the church was continuing to do. You know, because they were, they were learning together and, and they were just enjoying spending time together, being with people who are going to encourage you and build you up and remind you about God's presence in the world, about what Jesus had, how he had died and how he had risen from the dead so that you could be saved, so that you could know you were going to heaven too. As time went on, and as the church got more bold, they continued, continued to spend time at the temple. And there's one day where Peter and John and a, bunch of, a whole bunch of the church, they're there at the temple, and Peter gets up and he gives another, he gives a public sermon, and it attracts a lot of attention. Remember, there was a beggar who had, he had, been, he had, had not been able to walk his entire life. And suddenly, after Peter's sermon, Peter uh, ministers to him, and through the power of prayer and boldness and faith, Peter tells him, he tells him, get up, take, get up and walk. And the man does. And it attracts so much attention that the authorities arrest them because they want to, the religious authorities, because they want to make sure there's not something kooky going on. They arrest these men, and they take them in, and we're even, we're even told, uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. This is just a, less than two chapters away from um, what Ellen read for us. It says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the Scriptures. And they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. See, the more time that you spend with Jesus over time, when people spend time with you, they're going to feel like they're spending time with Jesus. The more time you spend with Jesus over time, when people spend time with you, they're going to feel like they're spending time with Jesus. And that's what was happening with the religious authorities. They, were, they didn't know what to do with Jesus, so they, tried to, they killed him. And that didn't work out the way they thought. And so when they see Peter and, and, and John and the other apostles and they're out preaching and, and the church is growing in numbers and they're thinking to themselves, it's just, it's, it's, like, it's like Jesus is back. It's like that guy from Nazareth is back. You know, we got rid of him. And now, it's like, and now how many of them are there? It's just, what, how, do you, how do you keep this under wraps? How do you put this back in the box? How are we going to make this... They didn't know what to do because the early church, they were, doing, they were doing what Jesus did. And what is that? So Luke gives us several, several major categories if you want to try to block out this passage and at the end of Acts chapter 2. The first, one, the first big thing that they were doing is when Jesus was traveling with his people, whether it was on, at, a, at a public event or if he was at a dinner party or whatever it was, Jesus couldn't help but share and teach and build up and edify the people. There was instruction. There was spiritual uh, 
tutelage going on. They were passing on spiritual things and ideas. He did that all the time. And so as the early churches, they come together in their homes, and if they're spending time together, they are, they're, list, they're listening to the teaching, teaching of the apostles. Remember, they didn't have any formal training at this. They went to, they, the only theological training, they, they went to Jesus Theological Seminary for three years. And it turned out that was a pretty good Yeah, you got enrolled in something like that. We'll see. They enjoyed teaching, teaching of the word. Now, see, again, that the, the three of us up here, when we were, we're trying to work with the Bird app that we were asking is there are a lot of different organizations that are out there where you can spend your time, where you can donate your time to help out, to volunteer. And there are some that have teaching that goes with it. There's, there, and, and the teaching, if you look at it, has kind of a spiritual sheen to it. It, it, it. it feels spiritual. And it's couched in spiritual language. But some of these organizations, if you look, they have their spiritual ideas and they even have spiritual rituals and things that they keep under wraps that are secrets. Like you can't, we can't show you what this is until you're, until you're a member, until you join us. And when you join us, then we'll, then we'll share the secret with you, but then you have to keep, it's a secret. Only members can know. Yeah, if you're considering getting involved in an organization that has secrets, mm, I think you, you, need to, you need to look at that really closely. Because the things that Jesus was teaching, they were pretty, they were all public. Like, in fact, when he was arrested on his last, the last night of his life, and he was on trial, I mean, he reminded him, said, look, I've... I've been public about everything I've been teaching. Everything I've been saying, it has been out in the open. If you come into contact with an organization that has secrets, including spiritual teaching that is secretive, brother, beware. Yeah. Yeah. Sister, st stay clear. Yeah. You might, you might want to give that some room. Get, sharpshoot that. Sharpshoot that. No secrets in the, in, the, in the kingdom of God. It's, it's freely shared. There is nothing that I'm going to share, that Pastor Dave's going to share. There is nothing that Pastor Joe is going to share at Faith Fellowship. There is nothing we're going to teach that is something that only members can know. It, it just, it's, we, want people to, we want people to know. We want people to pass it on so they can get turned on. Maybe one day they'll, they'll get raised up in their faith. They'll do it better than us. That's our hope. That's my hope. No secrets. The other church, they, there was teaching and there was fellowship. And, and fellowship, um, it's like quality time together. That, that's, that's when you spend time with other human beings and because you are coming together in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is working in your lives and bind, binding you together and encouraging you, it's, it's like you're with people that when you spend time with them, you don't know why, you don't know how, but there's something in you that gets fed just by being around that person or those people. So that, that's what we mean by fellowship. Now, it's, it's great to be out in the community and have affinity groups and, and you know, people that you have activities in common and volunteer groups. And, and you know, we've got people in our church that are you know, part of Kiwanis and they're part of Rotary and, and other organizations and the Alliance, and that's great. But when, you, when you're at the church, you, you see Jesus and you get, to, you get to experience his presence when we're around, when we're with each other. I mean, that's... Season, my, big, my big turnaround season in my life was at the end of college. I was in my early 20s, and when I was with a community of believers that were pursuing God, and I just, I just loved to be around them. <laughs> it just it, it did something for me. It touched me. It encouraged me. It made me want to be better. It made me want to stop sinning in certain things in my life. And it just, it, it, all those things, all those things. So there's an element of fellowship. Now, now, the flip side of that is that the experts, I think the 
Barna group uh, years back. Uh, Pastor Dave and Pastor Joe can probably uh, tell me or close to what year it was, but there was a study that came out of Christians in America, and the study showed that when you became a Christian, that you had about three years from the time you let the Lord really kind of really whoo, start working in your life, there was about a three-year period where you still had connections with people outside the church, with, you know, with your friends and your family and whatnot. But they found that over time, past the three-year mark, more and more of a person's time was spent in the church instead of being out, out, and, out and about and outside the church. And so they didn't keep up those connections with the friends or as close connection with the family. And it wasn't necessarily because they were angry or upset with those folks. It was just... There was so much going on, and the church had so many great classes and small groups, and, and there was servant service opportunities and, you know, being with the worship team or helping out with tech or, or the, you know, the clothing closet. Or, I mean, there's all these things that were going on that the friends that weren't Christians kind of got squeezed out because of scheduling. So my challenge to you is that as the Lord's just doing more in your life and as you, you're stepping it up and you're serving, you're making yourself available to church, you want to serve, you want to give God your best, you want to show up and, and have a stake in, in taking Christ's mission in, in, deeper into our community here in Kitsap and, and, and extending that around the world, that's great. But can you, leave some, can you leave some room, can you leave some time for your neighbors, for your friends, for the people that that are skeptical for the people that are just like, I don't know about all this church stuff. Can, can you leave them? Just maybe just a little bit of time. Keep those connections open. Can we prove Barna? We're going to prove Barna wrong, right? All right. Try to keep some of those old connections. The church has, we have, we have teaching. We have fellowship. We have the sacraments. The sacraments are religious rituals that Christ instituted, that, that he put into place so that the church could be edified and built up. It's in, it's in part a duty because he commanded it, so we're doing it. And in part, it's a promise because when we practice faithfully the sacraments, we experience his presence. When, when the, the sacraments are practiced, God shows up. The Lord loves it. In the Global Methodist Church, the two major sacraments that, that, we, that we practice on a regular basis and, and that we recognize as the main ones because they are the ones that Jesus instituted that did not exist until he showed up and pushed them off into place. So we have, we have Christian baptism and we have Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. And we believe that when we practice those, it encourages us, it builds us up. It's more than just our heritage. We look for God to show up when we do these rituals with faith. It's obedience, and it's a promise. It's, 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 it's both. So you're not going to share Holy Communion at a PTA meeting. <laughs> Now, the PTA could be a great place to, to share about the Lord. But you're only going to share the Lord's Supper. That's the church. So if you happen to be with a Chamber of Commerce meeting in some place and they're sharing Holy Communion, right on. <laughs> but that's not typical. But that is not typical. Not typical. Sacraments. And then finally... You see Jesus when you see the church praying through prayer. Jesus had, he had, there were, there were three main kinds of prayer that Jesus practiced. There was private, and he spent quite a bit of time. It, it bugged the disciple, his disciple team to no end. It bothered them so much. They would be all busy, and people were coming and needing things, and people were starting to come to faith, and, and, and then, and said, okay, oh yeah, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll get the answer to your question. Hold on, wait, where's Jesus? Wait, wait, where, where'd he go? Where, where is he? Where is, what, what do you mean he left yesterday? What? Where is he? What? What? But Jesus, no, 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 we'll get the answer to your question. Where is he? Is he coming back? Jesus spent time with his father. He went out to pray. He made time to pray by himself. 
And because of that, as a church, we spend time, you can spend time, we have the opportunity to spend time with the Lord by yourself. So there's no interruptions so that you get, to, you get to focus, you can drink in the word of God, hear, listen for his voice through the scriptures so you can intercede for people, so you can quiet yourself, so you can open yourself up, you got something to punch in a note with or, or maybe you got a notepad or a journal and you are ready to record anything that the Lord tells you just in case it's really him. And the more you do this, when you do, have, when you do feel like you get something, most of the time it is going to be him. He will speak to you. He's, he's going to show you what he wants. He's going to say what he wants to say. He's going he's to get, get his case across. So there's, there's prayer that's alone. Jesus also spent time praying together with his disciples. So as a group, they would, they would pray and ask God for help. And, and ask, like, the la- his last night of his life here on earth. What do they do? They're in the garden. Jesus is praying. He says, I'm just, I'm just going to be over here. I'm just a stone's throw from you guys. He just tells them, watch and pray. So they're all there. They're praying. It's important for us to pray together. It encourages us. Sometimes you can pray with each other in silence, and that's great. Letting the Holy Spirit speak. And it's all, there's also power in being with other believers where you take turns and you're praying out loud. And if you're, if you're not comfortable praying out loud, spend some time in a group with people that do pray out loud. It's a language that you will pick up. You'll learn that. It, it'll, it'll come. You'll, you'll get the words. The Holy Spirit will quicken your spirit, and you'll be able to kind of, you know, it's like, kind of like riding a bike, you know? You just uh, you get up, and after a while, it's, it's, you start moving. So we pray together. But the church also prays for others. And that was part and parcel. That was a regular part of their ministry, their ministry model as they traveled around to all these places and all these people that they got to meet with, they would always, now there was teaching, and Jesus consistently warned people, you need to turn from your wicked ways, turn from sin, and turn to God. Otherwise, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You are not going to go to heaven unless you put sin aside, turn away from all the dark stuff, and turn, come to me in faith. So you've got to, you have to repent. But when you repent, it's not, it's not the end, it's the beginning. Because then, you re, then the, the love of the Father gets poured through you. And the Holy Spirit comes in and becomes your new roommate. And, and now you, get to, you have the direct line with the Almighty is open. And the Holy Spirit's going to remind you about everything that Jesus did. Everything. So we get to... And that's where you get the power to pray for others. Now, there are, there are practical things that we need to do for people. And we, we do lots of practical things here. We, I, I just, uh, we've got some of our, our team put in hours. I mean, it is like a part-time job. For some of them, some weeks, it's for them, it's a full-time job. They are just organizing all of the things, making sure we've got blankets, making sure we've got uh, different sizes of clothing, making sure that all the, the food commodities and everything that are donated by different organizations and community come together, that we've got a full, uh, a full schedule of all the chefs and the cooks and the volunteers are going to come in to do our weekly meal and, and, and getting the severe weather shelter ready for when, the, when, the, uh, when it gets cold and when it's open. And, I mean, there's, there's a lot of details. There's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of work. But each of those things themselves in and of themselves those are things that other organizations besides the church you can you can find those in a lot of places but when we do those things on our best days on the good days you get those things and you get jesus you get the practical help and you get jesus and part of that is when we have the boldness to, to, to pray for people, to pray with people. I said, and again, I mean, some of you might be thinking, well, I, I, I haven't prayed out loud very much, and the church I grew up in, I mean, we didn't, I mean, we would pray for people, just not now. <laughs> or right here, you know. Like, we didn't, we just, we'd, 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 we would do private prayer for people when they had a need. But, I mean, in person, I mean, I don't know, it's pretty uncomfortable. That if, if that's you, I, that's the church I grew up in too. So I, I'm with you. I, this, does, this stuff did not come naturally to me. 
But as I've spent more time with people who are filled with Jesus, it, it turns out it's not as hard as you think. And, and he, God will show up. He'll do things that, that you hear stories about, you know, other Christians like, oh, they had this miracle or, oh, God gave them a word or, oh, and you think, wow, it'd be great. Well, it will be because God can and he will use you that way. He'll use you in practical ways. He'll use you in supernatural ways. So, uh, example, uh, we just had a uh, Christmas market, which we've been doing. How many years have we been doing the market? Was it year six? Years, I think this is our sixth Christmas market. Wednesday night. Some, there we go. Maybe I'll just do the handheld. Okay. All right. Wednesday night, we were, what did I do with the handheld? Can a pastor preach and chew gum at the same time? I don't know. There we go. We back? There we go. We got it. All right. After we had gotten done bringing a bunch of stuff from down from upstairs and youth group had helped out, um, one, uh, Grace got a word and said we need to pray around the, the Great Hall where we had most of our vendor tables and everything. So there were about, I don't know, three, four of us, five, three or four of us walking through. I think Laura was there, I was there, Grace was there. Um, and we were praying around the, around the room. And so I just kind of went along the tables and I, and I was just going to pray. I was going to touch every table. And some of them had a, a little name card that had the name of the, the, the vendor, whoever the vendor contact was. For that for that booth and I would just I started praying for the vendors as I was going around and I came to one table and I didn't I don't think it I didn't have a name sticker or I couldn't see it or I didn't notice it but I came to one table and I just prayed out I don't know why I prayed but I just prayed out Lord whoever this vendor is um, Lord let them uh, let them find an answer for their medical condition let them let, let them find uh, relief from their medical condition and I thought, well, that's kind of strange because that doesn't happen to me a lot when I'm praying, <laughs> just especially when I don't know who it is and they're not actually there present. And so anyway, so I just thought, huh. Yesterday, I was going around and uh, talking to vendors and I was thanking them for coming to the market and, and, and blessing our, our people and, and just to get a chance to visit and just see if the Lord might have anything to do. And I came to... Uh, that the table for the one that I prayed that prayer. But at the moment I was talking to this couple who ran this table, they did not, uh, I didn't, I had forgotten about the fact that the Lord had had me pray about medical condition. So I visited with them for a little while and, and then I went back and I had to go back to the office and, and work and try to finish up this sermon because we'll see how we did. And, and then in the middle of that, the Lord said, well, you know, that couple uh, that you, talk, you were talking to that was the couple for the, pr the table that I had you pray about the medical condition. And I went, oh, wow, yeah, that's right. And the Holy Spirit's quiet. So are you going to go ask them if you can pray for them? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Okay, yeah, you're in charge. Okay. So later that afternoon, um, I went over and I said, hey, um, I just wanted to let you know that... Um, uh, a number of us were praying around this room uh, in the middle of last week, getting ready for the market. And when I came to your table, uh, the Lord had me uh, praying um, for a medical condition, but I didn't know what it was. But and then this morning, I remember that you shared with me that you had um, that the the wife and that this couple that you had a heart condition that really just kind of really shifted things in your family a number of years back. And I said, um, would it be okay? It, would you mind if I prayed for you right now here while, while you got a break where there weren't any customers at the moment? And she said, yeah, I, I would love that. And it turns out they had a, another family need um, for a family member who was missing. And anyway, so we prayed about the missing family member. And, um, and then we, and we just, we prayed. Um, and Chris got a call this morning, contact this morning. And the woman has, felt, has experienced significant relief um, since the time of that prayer. And, and I, just, I just give glory to God for that because I just, none of us are that smart <laughs> and none of us are that powerful. 
but he is. And so prayer is, I mean, when you, when you see people praying and ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit, see, that's, that's, where, you, that's where you see Jesus. That's where you, you, you get the touch of Jesus. And that's, that's what shows you, aha, this is a church. This, this church is a part of the church with a capital C. Yeah. Yeah, praise God. All right, so, th- so this is what I want you to, what I, what I want you to do this week, um, except for Pastor Joe, obviously. Um, I want you to consider joining the church. Now, this is, if you, if you become a professing member of Silverdale Community Church, th- th- here are some reasons to not join the church. Um, if you're worried about getting into heaven, um, joining the church is not the answer. <laughs> Uh, if you're trying to impress your friends, joining the church is not the answer. Um, if you just want to be able to have uh, uh, voting rights at, at our charge co- annual charge conference, our annual business meeting that we're required to have as any nonprofit, and then, then that's not a good reason to join the church. If you want to show God that in this season, for, th- for this particular time in your life, for this, this local church, that you are all in and that you want to just, you want to see God do greater and greater things in and among his people that you're going to do whatever you can you're going to pray you're going to show up every you know every every sunday you can you're going to be here and if you're sick you're going to be streaming and you're going to have tylenol and cold compresses and you're going to have the stream on you're going to be believing that god is going to get you through your fever quickly maybe right now and that you're just you're just going to see that what god's going to do next if that's you then you should consider joining the church it's not it's nothing magic it's not it's not going to give you uh, any privileges, it's going to simply be a reminder that to be at our best, we need to be plugged into the body of Jesus Christ. So after worship today, we're going to have a, we're going to have a break. There's a few, couple things that are going to happen. Uh, if you're a guest with us and if you, have, you haven't been here before, uh, and I know we've got at least a couple guests that I, I've got a gift for you, uh, in part from a reward because they've already shown themselves to be very, very helpful. Uh, But we've got a gift for you. It's called the five-minute party. It's going to be in the social hall. There's a tablecloth, gold tablecloth, a little table tent. Uh, We've got a gift that's going to be ready for you. So it's going to be very, very brief, just a few minutes. It'll be right after worship, and then we're going to let you get on your way. And actually, I need to get on my way because then after that, uh, we'll wait about 10, 15 minutes or so. But then I'd like for everybody that wants to be uh, go through the membership class this afternoon, we're going to be in room 104. Uh, there were a lot of boxes in the MLN room from the, the market, so uh, we're going to be in 104, and if, um, if Pastor Dave's uh, visioning group, if you guys could bump down to the library if you're meeting, then that would make everything work. So if you want to be in the membership class, we're going to be in room 104. I think we'll be able to fit everybody in. I'm faith, I, I have faith that we will. Um, and that's going to take, uh, well, that will probably be, uh, I've probably got at least an hour of talking head stuff, and then we'll take questions, we'll have some discussion. And um, if, if some of you need a, a ride home, I can, I've got a, a room for at least three, uh, three or four that I can take. So, um, so we'd love for you, to, for you to do that. And again, this is an invitation for, uh, for grown-ups. This is an invitation for people that are growing up, for our, our st- any of our students who are with us today who have, who have been through um, Alpha. They've been through uh, uh, training and youth group and a lot of the core things of the faith. Think about joining the church. And uh, it's, it's not going to make God love you anymore. Uh, but it is going to be a way to, to have a focal point and step up your commitment here at SCC as a part of this greater mission that we all share, that Silverdale Community Church shares with Faith Fellowship and with New Life and with the Highway Church. And with, I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. We all have a, a common mission. And here at Silverdale Community, we want to step it up and make sure that we're doing our part. And that's, that's what membership will, will, will help you. Be one little piece to help you do that. All right. <laughs> Here at the end of worship, we're going to have a chance to pray. Pastor Joe is going to come up. We're gonna, he's going to close us with, in worship. We're going to spend a, have a worship time. And during this time, if you want prayer about anything, for anything, you can come up, you can come up to the altar. And if you just want to pray by yourself and quietly, you can do that. If you want me, uh, or uh, let's see, who else have we got? We got, I know we got Laura, we got Grace, we got Pat. Anyway, we've got the altar prayer team, 
and they're available to pray with you. So we will pray with you in person if you want. And we're just going to have just a few minutes. And so you just it's just this compact moment where you get to connect with eternity and get to lay your need out and, and, and see the Lord come and meet you. And again, the Lord, when we do things publicly and we show that courage, you know, like our, our two friends that came up and helped me out with the bird, the, the bird illustration, when you show that kind of courage, see, God loves that. And he blesses that. So it's not that he won't meet your needs, but when you take a step of faith and you come up in, in humility and just like, all right, I'm going to let him come and do it, then take advantage of that today. All right. The Lord's leading you. Yeah. All right, Pastor Joe, you want to finish us out today? We sing a song called The Lord, The Blessing. Lord bless thee and keep thee. So what I'd like us to do is make eye contact with somebody as we're singing this. Like you're going to say, this is for you. So when we're singing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee and then you look at somebody go this is for you and if you really want to make the point you point at them <laughs> the lord bless you all right or you can just smile and go you know what i'm saying you know what i'm singing so it goes like this Find somebody? Did you do it? We'll give you one more chance. Turn around and look at somebody. Here we go. thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Lord, it guards our heart and our mind. So, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, your blessing upon us is everything that we need. Lord, as we've blessed one another, let our hearts be glad. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give somebody a hug, would you, before you...